Hello, everybody. Welcome to a new Dive in Life show. And it's uh, it's been a while. We skipped like two months of summer because, you know, it was too hot everywhere and people went out partying. And um, uh, so I skipped the two months. I uh, had a great summer myself. I hope you did too. And we're back. And today we're back with um, Robbie Doherty. So welcome, Robbie. Um, everybody, <laughs> this is Robbie known from his music, uh, which is super nice. I'm happy you're on, man. And um, uh, I'm looking forward to a good show. Uh, one more note for the people. If there's something up with the sound or anything, please uh, let us know in the chat. Um, I'm, I skipped, I, I moved over to OBS just before uh, uh, I stopped the, the series and it was kind of a struggle today to get everything working, but I think everything works, but let me know if it's not. And please, if somebody can leave a message in the chat, because I haven't seen any chats yet. So let me check if the chat's working. I don't know uh, if it's uh, working. Ah, yes. Low house. Welcome. Great. Everything's working, Robbie. We can, we can get started. Oh, good. So, uh, oh, nice man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course, you know, uh, I put like a post up uh, a while ago and uh, there were so many requests for you that I just thought like, hey, why not? You know, I remember we spoke about it earlier. I can't remember. Yeah, a while back, man, a while back. Yeah, I can't, can't uh, remember how it came about, actually. It's been it's been a while. but It's, it's came about a good time as well because I've had a lot of people ask me, come on, you know, show me how to make this. How do you do that? So, yeah. You know, I haven't really had the time to sit down and, you know, plan any kind of lessons yeah so it's perfect in this and like you know i've watched your stuff before so i knew it would yeah it would work nicely yeah and i'm really excited because uh you know today when we were, were checking out the system i saw you work on ableton 9 which is uh, yeah i was like what this is like a way older version it's so cool <laughs> but it's also weird that it seems so ancient even though it's just two versions back but it just looks so different from from the new one I know, creature of habit, me. Yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> but you know, yeah, you should get an upgrade, man. It's it's nice. You'll love. I should, you. man. Today, yeah. I need an upgrade on my laptop yeah, you, as well. If you I've wait, got no to... memories. <laughs> I'm scared if I yeah. change anything now, it's all gonna come yeah. crashing down. Yeah, you might want to make it like get a new laptop and get Ableton. You know, because if yeah. uh, I don't know, if, like the the new one is is a bit heavier. You know, I think they uh, they say mm. 16 big uh, gigs of RAM for for the new. And I don't know what system you're working on, but you know. Mm. But it's nice. But it's also don't wait any longer because if you wait until twelve, it might look so much different. It's going to take you like yeah, a, that's the thing. It will too take much you. change. Yeah, case. exactly. Yeah, lots will change. And you'll love the new Echo device because if you're nine, you don't have Echo. You have a lot mm. of stuff that you don't have. There's many new like devices yeah, that yeah. came the last few years. Yeah, like I've, I've played around on other people's. Um, someone maybe used their eleven once. I can't remember who exactly, but yeah, it was cool. Yeah, yeah. But it was definitely a change, you know? So I was like looking through and be like, where's this plug in? Yeah. have this stock plug in here. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. I think that also kind of threw me off because I was like, I'm not sure if I'll miss this, Yeah, you know? But yeah. then it's sometimes just yeah. taking the leap into change mm -hmm. is a good thing. Yeah, getting used to it. You know, it, yeah. it's also like the clip editing looks a bit different. In the beginning, I was struggling and I now have like tabs on the, on the left where you can choose automation or you know choose the the envelope mm. so you, you can you can actually uh yeah just you know if you have any questions you you know where to find me <laughs> uh all right so cool we got yoast also online yoast always watching uh great i can't wait to uh, to get started shall we start with a little bit of music which is always fun yeah. i have uh, cruise control i because i control. got to pick the ones that you said so i yeah, chose yeah. cruise control <laughs> because it, this is a funny story i have the dream of me shall not fade which i think is a really nice tune also because it's it's different from uh what you normally do i haven't heard like mm. uh, a track like this from you and uh i was very excited hearing that one and uh funky ride uh, i liked i liked all the pictures you said so i thought uh, <laughs> All right, so let's start with cruise control, and um, yeah, then we'll talk a little bit about it. It's nice. Here we go. I don't think he felt anything after the crash.
the first one cruise control and uh you told me you made it in between gigs in the car hence the picture also that we had yeah yeah so it was literally i think it was going from i think it was newcastle to manchester how long, and, um, how long is that drive? i was supposed to get the train between those gigs but some other guys i knew were down at the newcastle gig and they said hey yeah. robbie do you want to lift it's going to be much quicker than the train some of my friends and i went yeah sure why not and um they turned around and they went a hey, one condition you got to make a tune in the car and i went well <laughs> we'll give it a go yeah and, um, so we jumped in the car started driving we had no aux cord or anything um uh there was i think there was four of us in the car and uh pulled into a petrol station to get petrol and the driver comes back out holding an aux cable and he goes you have to do it now nice. so we yeah. plugged in and that she started to make this tune over it was must have been like a i don't know a two-hour journey Someone can call me up on it if you're from the UK. I don't know how far exactly it is between Newcastle and Manchester. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so basically made the tune in the car, hence the name Cruise Control. Yeah, yeah. Finished it off at home. And um, those guys, you know, it's binary. Have you ever heard, heard of the parties in the UK? Uh, no, no. That's who it was, binary. They're based in Liverpool. Mm. And um, they've actually, they're starting their own record label. So potentially it's going to come out with them yeah uh, it yeah. needs to be planned or we need to agree on it or whatever yeah um but it, it does seem like a good ode to that car they need to release it it's the definitely the most logical it. step um, yeah but yeah it's just it kind of proves i like to work in odd places yeah so like even now i'm sitting in the kitchen because i've just moved into a new flat yeah so i don't have the half of my gear or anything here yeah it's you know but you still you still make it work which is uh which is nice you know that you can actually you can if you have a laptop and a headphone you can make music anywhere really i was speaking to um uh, uh our dutch friend wow i forgot his name he said he was uh, always on the uh, today i'm still very jet lagged man My, i've been looking for names all day it's really ridiculous uh, Robin Fett, yeah, I was with Robin Fett, and he was on the couch, and he just makes most music of, he has like stuff, but he's like, you know, most of the stuff I make on the couch, because I just feel comfortable sitting on the couch with my laptop, you know, so if you just have a laptop and a headphone, you're, you're good to go, basically, you know. It's all you need. My yeah. favorite tunes are just made on the couch, on the bed. In a you car. Don't want to play in a, in a, train, <laughs> in a car. Yeah, on the plane, <laughs> I find it hard, because in the plane, I hear... 
I hear the, you know, from the, from the plane. And I, I don't hear my low end really well. I, it doesn't. So usually in the plane, I sort music. That's usually it records some ambient, ambient noise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I use it inside. I use it in tracks. So it's, it's an option. But, you know, usually on planes, I don't get it. Or you need to have like maybe a cancel uh, noise canceling headphones or so. Well, that's, that's actually another one. Um, in my native and sound EP, there's the Steel Bird track. Mm hmm it's called that because it was made on a plane so it was it was originally called it was on an Aer Lingus flight that's an Irish airline yeah so from it was from Dublin to I don't know London Amsterdam or wherever it was but I started the idea on the plane in yeah. the airport and on the plane ah uh, cool and the original version was sent over to Daily Hots and Z2 as Aer Lingus B and, yeah and um <laughs> he actually signed it and uh we had to change the name because we sort of thought well we maybe just can't nick this huge company's name and use no, the yeah, track exactly, title. Yeah. So we, it's still we just called it nice. Steel Bird, which yeah. is like kind of a, an Irish joke slang for, you know, a, a plane. Yeah, it's a big steel bird. Nice, big steel bird. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Nice, super cool, interesting. Yeah, so it's nice if you can make music on the go. You know, I did try airports and stuff, and trains and buses. I once made uh, made a track on the bus to Berlin from uh, Groningen to Berlin. It's like, I think six to eight hours made a track on push i brought, brought my push had a little table in the bus uh, that was pretty nice you know that w went pretty well but i i, I do work the push out man if well, my friend he's got one mm -hmm. i tried using it but i can see why it's brilliant but i'm used to playing keyboard like I, yeah you know i played piano when i was younger and yeah you know i think the push just confuses me because i want to play some a chord but it's just buttons yeah you don't know what chord you're playing because it's like a yeah. different setup yeah but yeah you know I, I can play a little bit piano so i and I, I like to use this as well but it's also just nice to use to push sometimes because you could you know you can go up the scale really fast just by using this mm. and that goes way faster so it's cool if you want to do some some fancy shit yeah but it's, it does it's, seem great for like happy little accidents of the push yeah it's cool and you can you can add like uh like you know your drums programming is pretty cool on it it's nice you have to you have to get used to it but you know sometimes i just find myself programming everything as well it's like there's so many ways to, mm. to do it you know cool so there's a lot of people online artesi damason damaso leon nice yup the young nice we still have to call man yes yo how are you hmm? yeah i was just giving a shout out to you <laughs> yeah i'm gonna get him i'm gonna get him on the show as well uh we, we've had some contact so we're gonna call about it but um you know we're busy people um yeah man it's nice i'm really happy uh you're here and uh and you've got lots coming up because i uh, the, the tracks you send me are they all unreleased or um um yeah i think because i man. didn't see anything any of them yeah, on, they, but, yeah they're all unreleased yeah, yeah. nice yeah, yeah. They're unreleased. i thought well i mean people come on here they, they want to hear the stuff that's out they can yeah <laughs> yeah on my spotify so i'm glad to listen to it yeah yeah exactly yeah yeah Nice, cool. So um, uh, before we dive into other music, maybe let's get a project up. Uh, there's many people uh, asking for the the groove operator, no? Maybe we, we start operator. with this. Yeah, yeah, sure, we can do that. And let's see. I love the story today you told me about uh, the vocal. Like, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if we want to play it. <laughs> but do you do that more often? Can... Like, did you, did you sing it yourself first and then you get somebody to... Um... Yeah, so... Um... <laughs> kind of like the original version you'll hear me singing yeah you're gonna have to because i've lost the the real book yeah yeah you told but me yeah same thing it's just singing's terrible like, <laughs> can you can you see my uh yeah we can see it you could close your browser maybe for a bit the guys everybody this is ableton so, nine <laughs> we're back in time with uh, robbie doherty time yeah, yeah. keep on slipping okay into the future yeah yeah Let's see preferences should be good Right, let's get this was just something I was working on today. Can you hear it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. This reminds me of one track. I can't figure out which one. Dun, dun, dun. This this like dun, 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 dun. this is like um fuck it's some classic thing I believe anybody has the same is it is it that like synth sound that I've used in it play it like say again yeah play it play, yeah play it so I can hear it. 
Yeah, this one. That's um, yeah, that's like a weird plugin in Ableton Tension, you call it. Yeah, uh, it's one that I've never used for years, and I've actually started using it this year. But it's, it takes a lot of. It's a bit different, to be honest. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be like a string emulator, like yeah. you know, guitars, guitars and, and stuff. stuff yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So I just, I was kind of just messing around with it the other day and got this, you know. Got an, this sound out of it. It's a nice sound. It really reminds me of one track. I, you know, I have to listen to it for a while. But you can do cool sounds with. Um, yeah, you with can. Tension. I just, I like it because um, I think it sounds quite trancey. A lot of the stuff you can get out of it, um, like some of the old trance tunes. Um, and like, I grew up. My mum was a big trance fan, so yeah, it was yeah good to listen to a lot of that. Uh, so your mum was like a uh, Armin van Buren fan. Yeah, well, I'm sure she is. And Judge, Judge <laughs> Jules, Judge Jules, and uh, all them. Yeah, yeah. I used yeah, to go. I, I was. Uh, I used to work in a nightclub, and me and some friends, we uh, we organized this bus tour, and um, uh, and on the we went to God's Kitchen, and in God's Kitchen you had like uh, Judge Jules playing Armin van Buren and all these sort of guys. It's really mm. cool. Yeah. Like yeah, Judge is a cool guy. Yeah. Actually, it was like. Well, it was in a weird circumstance because it was to do with um, contracts and stuff with music. But he was yeah. actually my manager. He is friends with him and he's the lawyer that worked for him, look, checking over my contracts and stuff. So we were on a Zoom call and then he comes up and I'm like, yeah. that's Judge Jules. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> You're actually a lawyer. No way. Oh, wow. It's just like Armin yeah. van Buren, also a lawyer. The, the, is he? He also finished his law degree before he... Uh, yeah, I used to be oh, a no big way. fan of uh, Armin like back in the like early 2000s, you know, uh -huh. with his first track, Blue Moon, I think it was called. I was, I really like that. Maybe I should get Armin on the show one day. I'm actually doing a, a workshop for <laughs> Armada during ADE, so who knows? Uh -huh. I might, I might yeah, see him man. and ask him, why not? It would be yeah. great to see if, if, if he wants to come on. I don't think he works in Ableton, but you know, it would be fun though. That mm. is, I'm going to try. If I see him, I'm going to, I'm going to try. I said, hey, dude, you want to come and dive in live? That would be great. Um, Why not? The Maso has a Chris Tussie one. No, it's not a Chris Tussie one. It's like a really a classic track. I don't know. I'll, I have to I have to listen to, to Robbie's loop for a while and, until I get it. But there's this old tune. It's really like, I think it's 90s or early 2000s. This, this sound that you've used reminds me of one classic classic dance track. I'm not even sure if it's housey or maybe a bit more trendy. It's nice. Uh, is it... Um Dun, Talk dun, is miracle. That could be. Because I think it sounds quite like it. We should, I have to check it. I have to. I'll check it after the show. Yeah. <laughs> check it after the show. Because <laughs> if it is, put it in the comments. Yeah. Everyone needs to know if it was or not. Yeah, exactly. It's it's such a it's a nice and it's funny that you get it from the tension because I'm sure they didn't get it from tension or maybe even from no, a hardware unit. No, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, there's so many ways to make sound. Um, Did tension exists in the nineties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't don't think so. No, no. Yeah, so this is a this is the Groove Operator project here. Um, I've actually lost the vocal. This is where it used to be. So sadly, you're not going to hear that. But you know, we can I hear yours. The original one, which is oh wrong thing, which is this. It's just really low quality. There's no mic. Oh, so you did it on the phone or something? Well, it wasn't even on the phone. It was literally just I hit record on the laptop and just used oh, my yeah. MacBook speakers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spoke yeah. it in just for a rough idea. Yeah. And then, uh, well, yeah, I'll let you hear it. It's it's terrible singing. This is um, that's how it sounds. Oh, wrong thing again. Smooth operator. <laughs> yeah, you my smooth operator. <laughs> That's how it goes. It's just this. So is, I'm, I'm it really, was. Yeah. It says smooth operator there because that was the original idea. Yeah. And we kind of. It's actually my friend. Do you know the tune that goes smooth operator? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Sade, you know? like, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so someone said you should, you should do a remix of that, and um, <laughs> that was the original idea. But I couldn't remember the melody of the original tune. I remembered yeah. the vocals. It was smooth yeah, yeah. operator. Yeah. So yeah. I just put it in messed about with it and then went right i can't do this we're gonna have to come up with some new lyrics yeah so groove operator was the the choice which, yeah it yeah. works it's nice and um, it's like a little little uh, spin-off from uh from smooth operator it's actually yeah. funny because i listened i think i listened today to the time keeps on slipping into the future 
that vocal is also not the original vocal, right? Or, or if, uh, that's that's um, Steve Miller band. So ah. it is. Ah, cool. Yeah, it's, yeah, but it's just one little part of uh, the track. Yeah, yeah. So not, I thought like maybe you had that "Fly Like an Eagle" or something. It's yeah, 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 yeah. Fly yeah. like an eagle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah that's the one. That's yeah, the cool. One. That is nice. So just yeah, ran the vocal through. Um, I've got a Korg mini log synth at home, so I made this patch just a really kind of bright saw, and that plays plays the melody. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. The vocoder on it, yeah. you know? And um, when, then when you play this, but, you know, tweak around the parameters a bit. Mm -hmm. And that's basically how Groove Operator was, <laughs> the idea was born, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, super cool. It's a nice nice way to use this uh, this uh, this vocoder, you know? I hear uh, also, like, Joko does a lot of this in his, uh, in his more Coulter kind yeah, of... Yeah, you know? he's done... Um, one of his breakbeat ones recently. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but it was really cool the way he used the vocal. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. chords rather than yeah. single notes. Yeah, you know, yeah, nice um, and funky. Don't know what what sort of where should we dive into in this track? What do you think? Bob? Yeah, let's go over from uh, maybe from kick to bass and just uh, yeah, just let's cool. go one by one. You know, I, I see you've so called the, your bit your kick audio one, which is a great name yeah, for so kick. <laughs> audio one. Just the kick was actually blatantly stolen from another track. So, um, it's, on that must have it's a good kick, tops. man. It's stolen from the rain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. And do you then steal it from a wave file or like an MP3? Oh, from a wave. Yeah, from a wave. yeah, yeah. Um, well, usually I just um, you can spend hours processing kick drums, but. In my opinion, there's there's going to be a kick drum out there that's processed in the way that you kind of want yours to sound. Yeah, in most exactly. cases. So yeah. if you do that, do a little bit of extra work, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, it's, 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 it's a it's, lot of time, and the listeners not. I also you know. say a good kick goes a long way. I have I know a guy that was working for six years with the same kick, you know, and nobody came up to him like, "Hey, dude, you're always using the same kick." No, it's just if you make music with it, mm. the kick's just a really good basis, you know. But he always used that's the it. same kick. Yeah, yeah. Like there's loads same. of my kick tracks I use the same kick. Not yeah. this one. I think. I've also going to use this in this one track yeah i have a few favorites um, yeah, yeah yeah i've got a few that i just keep going back to and you know i'll you know shorten the the length of the kick you know yeah. or just like a little it. with a bit of saturation for any that's you know yeah. they seem to work just nice kicks yeah. with a nice transient yeah it's good to find good kicks and just yeah. stick with them you know for a while this is just some vinyl noise yeah um very soft in the mix. Literally, there's there's no reason those effects are on there at all. You no. can take them off, it's doing nothing. I think they were just on the channel anyway, but yeah. it didn't make a difference, so I never removed them. Yeah, but it's also like very nice to have a little bit of a sort of like a something that's like hissing yeah. or, or, or grunching in the background, which is nice. I don't know. It always fills up the the track a little bit. It gives it, mm. I don't know. It's it's maybe it's a mental. It does. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Well, that's most of my tracks. I'll put in some kind of vinyl noise in there. Yeah. Just, it's nice. It fills the gaps, gives it a warmer feel. I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, fuller feel. Also for the more empty part, where you, it's parts where you only have kick and bass, it sort of yeah. like adds some sort of thing to it, which is interesting. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes as well, what I would do is you know widen it. So, I mean, you can get plugins to do. It. I'm sure most people know how to do that, but I'm quite old fashioned in the way I do this. I like create audio effect rack, create two different chains. So. Um, there's two and one left, one right. I'm sure you've got a tutorial on how to do this, the mm. ass effect. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stick it on one and then have like a, oops, still have like a really short, um, short decay time. Yeah. And then, you know, it's, oops. Yeah, like a little bit of milliseconds and then it just makes it a little yeah. bit wider. Yeah. Yeah. Go up to 10 or whatever, it widens it. Um, yeah, so that's on most of my tracks. Yeah. Bass line, a lot of people ask where my bass lines. There's nothing crazy going on, to be yeah. honest. I actually yeah, did yeah. watch the the Joko tutorial, and it's quite funny because in everyone was asking him about the Get Sexy bass line. Yeah, and, and it was like the Ableton one. I was like sat there like, it's like, Anis, don't give away the secret. Don't give it away. It's oh, yeah. just the Ableton bass, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's actually, this one was 
the guitar bass. Yeah, the organ CMG. bass is also really nice from Ableton. Like the organ is bass it? and the guitar yeah, bass. I've never, yeah. never used it, no. Yeah, the organ bass is also, it's it's like really, really nice. You check out the organ bass. Uh, so yeah, it's really, will, really cool. Yeah. So this is. So. This Everybody starts right. using Ableton kind of guitar bass. Now. <laughs> so. <laughs> Made this so long ago and trying to remember what I actually done when I made the track. Oh, so you get the hot tube shit you're Seems like right. yeah. Seems like probably guitar bass, just see if it's um It's so cool. You're only using Ableton stuff, right? You don't have any external plugins. Most, I've looked I, at your yeah, plugin list. Not really, man. I've got um yeah. sometimes use the the M one. Mm. Uh I have Tantra. I used to use it more, but not so much now. Yeah. Um what else have I got? Um, which LF Auto. Oh, yeah. Like put, yeah. I'm sure LF Auto might be on this group. Oh, uh, yeah, it, 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 you, you could you could like get Ableton 11 and you have LFOs and envelopes tools in inside of Ableton, you know. Mm. LF Auto, mostly I use it for all my bass as a side chain. Ah, cool. Yeah. So I quite like it to pump the whole way through the track, so I'll just leave it on. Mm -hmm. You know, it's yeah. not a drastic side chain, really. No. Um, so this is. I think the standard guitar bass setting is not exactly like this. Yeah, so I turned it off oscillator A. Just thought it sounded a bit muddy or something. Then I the mono hot tube saturation. It's a preset. Yeah, yeah, I like the saturator, the hot tubes. Yeah. I like it a bit warmer yeah. as well, which is really nice. Yeah. Hey, you got um, Luke Plug online. Yeah. Hey, Luke. Glad you're tuning in. Sorry, I had to just give a little shout to Luke. <laughs> a very nice producer from Rotterdam. Yeah, I'm just glancing down, trying to keep an eye if there's any comments or questions. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah, cool. Yeah, guys, you, you can jump in as well. You can shout what, uh, what if you... Who is also using Ableton 9, which is funny. Mendes, Probably welcome, man. No one. I'll see I'm you this weekend. Survivor. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. You might be. Now, there's more people, actually. That some people actually claim it was sounding better. I have, I've read that online yeah. as well. I was like, yeah, I don't know. Nah, I don't know. I don't know, know. about that, it sound, to be it honest. Sounds, it's, it's, it probably doesn't sound worse. You know, it's, yeah. that would be weird, you know. But some so, people are really deep into these kind of things. Yeah, games. I couldn't tell the difference. If you, this track was made on 9, this was on 10. I could, honestly couldn't tell the difference. Also, this now. low boost on your on your, like... I don't know, um, 10 hertz or something. That's super epic. <laughs> yeah, so, do you know what? I'm not, oh, 50 hertz. I'm not oh, actually oh, sure why I've done you. this. 50 hertz. Yeah, yeah, um, okay, yeah, yeah. I thought it was maybe I was effect. playing with it as a filter and then yeah. like just brought it down and there was a little... Yeah, know, but this should be like fine. This should, I, thought, left on. I thought it was the new one. With the new one, you can do this even at, at 10 or 20. So I thought like, hey, this is strange, but it's mm. uh, this is uh, this but, the older um, EQ. It doesn't go as low. I don't actually know if it makes any difference at all. Let's it's see. nice though that you use only Ableton stuff. Yeah, it makes it a little bit fuller. It does, yeah, 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 yeah it yeah. does actually. Maybe there was some method in that madness there. No, it's just. But um, if it I mean, good, it sometimes like rather than overdoing it with saturation or whatever on your low end, yeah, you can, kind of we can do multiband saturation, saturate the low end or whatever, and sometimes just EQing a little bit helps. Yeah, in my opinion. Yeah. You know? Um. So this, I think, was taking out a little of the mids. Saturator again. I must have just went crazy on this here. I think the saturator is not, there's nothing <laughs> happening in that saturator, no? It's like the drives on not, zero. So yeah, there's nothing yeah. really. Yeah. Not. Erosion is nice. Erosion, I love erosion yeah. on bass lines. But it's actually two layers, so that's the first layer of the bass. And then you've got Ah, oh, this one is like, yeah, it's nice. So I think operator looks slightly different sounds than operator, yeah. So you can see, yeah, this one looks like I've dropped the level of oscillator too. Yeah, Sorry, and probably see. you EQ'd a little bit of low end out of this second one because it's yeah. a bit more. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have any sub. Yeah, there you go. Give it that nice punchy sound. Same thing going on here. Yes, yup. See you tomorrow, my friends, or speak to you tomorrow. <laughs> I'm gonna get Yop on. Yeah. That would be fun. There's no multiband dynamics on this. No. Yeah, it's just the. Yeah. I think it's nice to make two on. layers. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. 
That's nice to have two so layers of your. Pretty your, much, that's it's. Yeah, you know, gives a fuller base. It's most, interesting. Yeah. You always work like this, like. Uh, say, uh, say again, you. Can't, I I missed you there. My internet right. must have dropped, man. Uh, do you always work like this with having two layers of bass or is that just something you did now or do you usually like do you know pretty much most of my tunes will have two layers of bass so yeah. like sub or the real beef of the bass line and then something on top to give it that nice little snap yeah you know, whether yeah. it's a transient yeah. or a something like this it's just a little bit more in the high frequencies yeah um yeah, pretty much always something I've always done. Nice. Yeah. Um, so cool this one's it. not the most exciting bass line in the world, to be honest. Um, I think it's more the the actual pattern that makes it interesting. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's nice though. It's a nice pattern. It's a good vibe. Yeah. So that was just recorded in my keyboard yeah yeah <laughs> midi keyboard uh so that's it kick and bass simple yeah. pretty much uh drums let's see what's going on here it's almost like i'm looking back on what i've done man and <laughs> trying to process why i don't think as well yeah. it's quite difficult actually yeah welcome to the world of uh yeah. of, of the teaching game yeah yeah you have to go like what <laughs> so why I actually hear something strange in there that you wouldn't notice if you played the full track. I must have done something with an echo on a clap. So yeah, this here. Sorry, I'm really disorganized in Ableton. That's <laughs> <laughs> all good. Terribly disorganized, but it's just kind of getting into the workflow of adding elements just on top of each other. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes accidentally shifting them around, but it's, you know, I probably should label things a bit better and <laughs> right, yeah to... yeah you know it's it i like to have structure so if i have a track that it, that i don't really like i can always go back to it later and everything has a, the name and the color i always use which is which is nice but you know I, I also believe strongly that people should work the way they feel comfortable you know and mm. if for you yeah, that's exactly. like just banging out banging out ideas and just not giving names or anything it's the only thing is if you're looking for the clap then uh, you have to go like, okay, is that audio 15, like audio 12? Yeah. So it's, you know, you save time with a little bit of organization. Yeah. But sometimes though, like by the time I get to the end of a track, you know, I probably click that clap about, you know, 50 times anyway. So I sort of know, right, that's it. Yeah, yeah at some it's point you know. 15, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, like this, just simple snare. Yeah. Okay, we got some Brooks questions coming in. Roll off the highs right? a bit. Yeah. Off the lows. And all sample based, eh? so um, either they come from yeah. stuff you get from loops or one shots. <clears throat> Mostly, yeah, everything is. A lot of my stuff I'll cut out of loops, so I'll, I'll listen to loops and I go, "Oh, like that was a, probably a snare from a loop." Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Like that snare. Used it. Yeah, Sydney um, Charles pack from Sample Market. Nice. Yeah. Uh, nice, yeah. Nice pack. Um, just a hat, pretty much. Some drastic EQ on that, just to soften it. Yeah. Um, nice. That's the main hat. Um, yeah. Use the snare compressor for whatever reason. Perfect. <laughs> Brings out a little bit yeah. more of the of the the dust. It's yeah. a nice saturated loop. Probably recorded through yeah, yeah through tape. Yeah. You see it tape. Yeah. And then LFO tool. Just to take out um sort of the, give that a bit of a bounce almost. You know, yeah. Take out this yeah. you know, the transient on the start didn't need that. Yeah, so if you have filters long... on there because parts in the track, I'm sure that Yeah, it's um, nice if you have a long head to do that, actually you know, uh, I thought about it. Dips it dips down here, yeah. opens up. Gives you really actually, that like housey bouncy vibe, you know. Yeah. <laughs> So there's obviously reverb on that, but that's going to be on the, the group. Yeah. So on my drum group, normally use the mix gel. I don't like it on full. Um, just um, let's listen to it with the on full. I think it's just a, a 
bit too sharp. Yeah, yeah. Um, saturator, just what's this here? DTMF. I even use this. Ah, that's what that was for. So in, it's, between it's, certain phrases, sometimes I would put this on. Yeah, and um, you can use it sort of like a. It's it's on there in, on the group. Yeah, it's a frequency I shifter. Obviously, haven't yeah. used it in this yeah. this track. You know, just shift the frequencies at the end of. Yeah. You know, sixteen bars or whatever. See you like that. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Just it's creates cool. a bit of variation. Yeah. This was on it for the builds. Take yeah. out the lows. Yeah. Um, reverb, same thing. So normally have a dry and then a wet, where I'll bring up the volume of the wet on you know the main build of the track. So here. drop it out um this here it's quite a drastic cut on the eyes actually i've done on this one <laughs> i think with groove operator i don't know why i was going for that uh, and dustier kind of old school feel to the track so i just mm. rolled off a lot of the highs yeah yeah um, it's sometimes nice you know that works really well to cr yeah. get this like classic Tantra, vibe. yeah Tantra are on here because i've used them before on um i know my drum roots mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff on it but it's sort of stuff i sometimes use sometimes don't yeah um tantra pretty sure i had these set to just effects on the drums yeah i've yeah. seen you've done a tutorial on that before actually yeah yeah exactly also but, like to get yeah, glitchy drums yeah, yeah yeah what i do is put it on the grip and then um uh, and took the dry wet yeah ripped the hole yeah at the end of phrase and stuff yeah cool um yeah so that's that it's actually great the drums pretty great simple creation. so this actually this people might find this interesting as i've told it to a few people before and they never really think of doing it so this is literally just a loop from piv pack juggle pack right yeah so what i did was uh just redo it for you here actually so basically a lot of my tracks have this something i kind of was messing about one day and decided to do for whatever reason so here's the loop i put the eq into mono stereo yeah take out all the all the mono all the mono and sometimes with some loops you're left with like a nice little crackle in the background yeah. that has some rhythm to it yeah, so you get some width. Uh, the, yeah, extra you width. get like a wide. That's a really nice. That, doesn't really. That's a super trick. Flash too much of the drums. That's in pretty much all of my track. It's like yeah. a almost every loop I put in Ableton, I will do that too to see how it sounds. Yeah, yeah. And if it, if it's, it's, you know, yeah, yeah. That's it obviously thing. has to have stereo. Yeah, and it's uh, nice because if, if you, in it. usually these loops are, you know, nice volume, and it's nice to add something like high in the in this in the sides, you know. So you get like this more yeah. wide yeah. feeling of your track, and it's not clouding up your mix. It's just in high. Yeah. This is like, yeah, Groove also says now that's a tip. That's a great tip. Yeah. Yeah. Also, you're getting <laughs> some love for the track you made on YouTube with the emotions a cappella from Mariah. Um, Groovo says loves how your sound is similar path to Joko start off, off techie venture deeper into minimal my ears progression as an artist is awesome well there you go my friend yeah super yeah. nice and we also Cheers, have a question guys. from Kane Sonder he says do you have an example or how to keep a song interesting well obviously what you do with all these little tweaks in the end like with the frequency shifter and with Tantra in the end do you have any yeah. other, other tips that people can use to make their tracks sound more interesting over time like with transitions or or anything what, what would you be your your call on this i'd say like first of all put the track on take a step back you know you can get lost in even lost in you know working on the same loop for ages or in the same part of the track take a step back walk out do something else come back play the track just stand there and listen and if you feel you're getting bored of that loop you need a change at that point if you get what I mean. So yeah. if you're waiting on something coming, then it's too late. Something should have already happened. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, introduce yeah. a new element at that point because the time you're going, right, I'm waiting on something coming. I made this track. 
the chances are about 90% of other people are going to be fed up with that scene. Yeah, you're going to go like, yeah, point yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so when you feel um, something coming in, how, how would, you, would you add like little little uh, quirky bits? Or, yeah, it doesn't, you know? doesn't have to be anything crazy. Just, you know, it can be as simple as changing the rhythm of a kick, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's like bum, bum, bum. I might have done it in this track. So, yeah, I see yeah. Bum, bum, so here, right. there you go, exactly. So, you listen, the kick drum, you know. Four on the floor. Yeah. And right at the end of this phrase here, you notice how you slightly Yeah, just a little slightly offset. Yeah. So you know. Yeah. Yeah, you can make variations of this as well. And then yeah. yeah. Um to be honest, just normally I work in well, it depends really. Sometimes I would work in blocks and be like, right. Okay, got this block here. Bring a new element. And if yeah. you notice, every time the kick changes, every time you get that little stutter in the kick, yeah, each one is actually a lot of them are actually slightly different. Yeah. So you don't have to do the same thing all the time for all the time it takes. Could make a track a lot more interesting. So this yeah. one goes. Yeah. Next yeah. one is that one that goes sort of like um, like a triplet kick. Yeah. Then, 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 then we've got this one. Yeah. And then it's a reverse end. Here's a reverse one. I love a reverse yeah. kick. Yeah, you know, I have this thing that I uh, that I teach a lot to people. I call it pattern variations. So it's either having like another pattern of your hi-hats, for instance, where the hi-hat makes a little different skip and you use those different variations yeah, throughout yeah. the track. And these little things make a track that way more interesting because the the brain of the listener is expecting the same thing. And when it's just in slightly different, they you keep them engaged in the track. If it's constantly the same fucking thing then yeah after four minutes you're like you know i've heard this track you know mm -hmm. so keeping yeah. variations. it is just yeah variation but not too much but not too much also yeah it's, rep, it's, yeah it's, at yeah. the end of the day repetition is it's your friend in a way because yeah. you know if something's repetitive it gets stuck in people's heads yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's finding the balance man it's just like real yeah, life you have is. to find the balance hey it we is, got mr yeah. azara online Shouts hey, Robbie. Okay, how are you, man? <laughs> he says, "What version of Ableton is that?" That's nine, man. This He's on nine. I ancient. tried to. <laughs> this is a relic. <laughs> yeah, I was even like when we met this afternoon. I was like, "Is that eight? You know, it's just so cool. <laughs> and and I, it's funny because you also you and Andrew have similar style working. I think you, Andrew, and and Joko have a very simple way of approaching that thing. Not like oh, I have to get all the new plugins or whatnot. You and yeah, just work fast. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's nice. Yeah. I don't know. I know. Yeah. Beyond, yeah, on the question of variation, just little elements every every now and again. So there's just yeah, just a little yeah, kind of like a little part of a loop. taking that from a yeah. loop or something. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's it, this is also what what I saw from how uh, Andrew works. For instance, like just chuck in some stuff and mess around with little mm -hmm. bleeps and blops that you find in a loop, and just see if you can yeah. fit them anywhere. Maybe later you move them a bit. You know, yeah. Mm. Uh, music live asks do you compress the kick uh, we had the kick before and he said kick, no, no just there's no compression just steal a good kick it's, or find a good kick in the packs you know yeah this one was sampled from someone yeah so it's already yeah sounds good good kick opinion. goes a long way <laughs> yeah. yeah so to be honest the drums everything else is pretty simple because um, I've actually froze this so I'm not sure what it was before. Just some like fully some. Yeah, yeah, it's cool to have that. Little clicks and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I must have. I think maybe highs, what I yeah. done with this was perhaps had a loop. I think maybe added a, a frequency shifter. Yeah, fucked it all up and then. Uh, yeah, 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 crazy. Yeah, then yeah. points that out. Mm. Um, so you know, just freeze, collect, track, and then. Actually, listen to about this. Yeah, I must have messed that around. Yeah, yeah, cool. It's oh, nice. sorry, no, I'm on the. Yeah. Sounds like it was a bass. A bass loop, maybe. Here's the question of the day: What was yeah, this? What was this? <laughs> 
Yeah, it's nice, you know, but you know, there's so many ways to find cool stuff. I, I think uh, Sidney Charles was also like showing some stuff that he, you know, layers little here, yeah. little things on top of each other. That, that, oh, here you go. Oh, there we go. I lost you for a second there. Don't know. Could be anything. Yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> Just clicks, clicks yeah. and stuff. Um, nice. So. And and we got another question come in. Um, uh, Groovel asks, would love to see your go-to bass plugging. Well, it was the guitar bass from Ableton, actually. Yeah, no, nothing guitar fancy. bass. Um, yeah. In one of my other projects, you can see that as well. I've got a little one shot that I've actually taken from the Chord Mininog. Uh, it's just a, a basic saw bass. Yeah. Um, I sometimes layer that on top of a sub. Um, I have done tunes before. Where I've used bass from packs, you know, and layered those. Um, most most of it is the guitar bass, and I'll yeah. tweak it in some way. Yeah. Because I like I, I like the low mids in it. Um, I think it sounds quite natural. I like the sound of a almost realistic bass guitar sound yeah. in a track. Man, you know, operator so. operator is one of the most versatile synths. I I know it takes the yeah, least it's, CPU. It's I did a trick track recently on. Uh, I did like a tutorial with one of the tracks that I'm releasing in in uh, in Dublin. And uh, the bass, and I found this old project, and it said great ba great baseline, dude. It was just a loop I made once. So I'm like, oh wow, this is a mm. baseline. And so I found inspiration and finished the track, and I used it in a tutorial. People were asking, oh, how did you make this bass? Can you do a tutorial on the bass? It was just mm. just an operator patch, you know. Operator can be really sounding really great, you know. It is. Yeah. It's great. I mean, if you learn how to use operator, yeah, 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 you know, do some do a lot of things with it. There's so basically, it is literally just. Go into bass. Yeah, also a, check the me, organ nice bass. Point, check the organ bass. bass. Is that already in there? Organ bass. You probably will like that one as well. Organ bass. This one here. This one is nice, man. Let's try also, it. Also, it's on. Uh, it's on solo. Yeah, it's on solo somewhere. Where is it? Uh, this is not. The, this is not the same organ bass that I have. I is think it not, no? maybe this is the, the rubbish give it a line yeah. line one this is the nine one yeah because <laughs> this is not the one no you could turn this into something if you filter it maybe but, uh, maybe it's a, maybe it's in a different i should check it yeah, but, but the organ bass in 11 is great or in 10 also I think yeah it's, I, I need to get 11 now you, just for this organ bass yeah it's nice um i used to use the house bass but then it used it was too heavy in my yeah yeah so guitar bass mm -hmm. that's what i use sorry i'm also missing a computer mouse i normally yeah. use one but i don't actually where i put it i packed up a lot of stuff <laughs> to come over here and can find it so i'm using a little track pad guy. so guitar bass is yeah it's fucking amazing yeah so this is the secret sauce guys the guitar it's bass great. from ableton don't look any further Hey, we got M High like, is here. Yeah. Alessandro Tonelli is here. Hey guys, what's up? It's getting fun here. Got loads of people online. And uh, our friend from uh, um, Dublin, Mendes, is asking, "How would you start an idea? Do you start with drum, drum, uh, drums, or bass, or vocal, or melody?" Groovo also asked, "Like, Hang on. Uh, wait, my battery's almost dead. Put this in. Who doesn't die?" Is that what happened there? Your battery was almost dead. My battery was almost <laughs> dead. Yeah. You went all robotic for a minute on my screen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I hope. I hope. I could hear like every fifth word that you were saying, man. <laughs> oh fuck! That, that, I hope it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, what what were you saying? Uh yeah, like uh, we got many people online. We got Mi uh, here. Ben Lloyd's here. He's back. Uh, he has a question also. Alessandro Tonelli's here. Um, Mendes asks. Uh, would you start? How would you start an ID? Do you usually start with drum, bass, etc., or vocal or melody? Um, usually drums. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll start with compiling drums. You know, some kind of a groove. I'll have something in my head. Usually, I'll hear a track and go, "Oh, those drums are cool," or you know, "I like this about it." Yeah. So I'll just um, start a track. Start with the drums normally. Once I've got a rough drum groove. Down. I always play a bass line in, which always ends up changing in the end of the project. Yeah. Because I'll play the bass, then I'll change my mind completely. I'll try and find, you know, some 
hook or some synth elements to fit on top of it. Yeah. But I'll always end up going back to the bass line. Yeah. And like changing it to sort of fit around what's going on melodically. Yeah. Um, in most cases, because, you know, I think if I play the bass in just bass drums kick, I'm going to try and fill out the frequency spectrum and it'll just sound too busy with the bass line after I add everything else in. So yeah, yeah. I think it was actually, I think it was DeMars who said to me one time, I was chatting to him and he goes, yeah, he says the best thing I ever stuck by was gaps create groove. So yeah, that's a good sentence. Silence is good in music. Yeah, yeah. To have your bass, like have some space for the other sounds. And it's also like creates yeah. call and response, which is, yeah, a lot of uh, elements mm. talking well, together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I find it hard when changing the bass. I had recently made a track, and I, I, uh, I had like the bass line in there, and then I played it out somewhere. I was like, ah, I don't know, the bass needs to change. And I, f I fiddled around for two hours trying to make a new bass, but everything mm. I, you know, maybe it just wasn't my day. But um, I find it hard mm. to change kick or bass in the end of the project. I usually end up like, okay, well, never mind, I'll make a new one. It's hard. Well, but sometimes. I'll spend days, you know, if I get writer's block on a certain track, and I'm trying to work on it, trying to figure out how to make something decent. And sometimes it is as simple as the kick's not right. Yeah. Because yeah. I've done that before. I've been working on projects. And it's like, yeah. something's not right here. I don't like this. I don't like this. And I'll drop it in your kick drum and go, oh. Oh. Was that it? That's, that's made a hell of a Man, difference. Yeah, that. that's a good yeah. one to take away because it sometimes can be so simple. You can get in the wave yourself, even though the whole groove is good, but it just sounds off. Maybe it's just the kick that's lumpy or or too long. You know? Yeah, mm. that's good. All right. Um, also, uh, what do we have? Uh, la, la, la. Uh, what comes first, melody or bassline? Well, obviously, bassline, and then you go to melody, and then you change the bassline. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, sometimes melody. Though. I yeah, think there's yeah. no, there's no one it, way. It can change. Yeah, I've got no formula for it. Yeah, um, to be honest, groove operator is pretty bassline heavy tune. There's not much happening yeah. with synth yeah. group. So here we have it. It's, you know, not really much at all. Yeah. Let's see, where's it most busy? Yeah, probably somewhere around here. Nice pads. So that's a freeze of something from the M1. M1, nice. Um, I think what I'd done was basically just had a filter, loads of resonance on it. Yeah. And sort of opened and closed it. This was almost always. Oh, sorry. Also, M1. Yeah. Just an organ hit. That's it. Um, a lot of my stuff actually as well. I um, mean, probably struggle on the CPU, points that out to audio. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, or it could have been this here is literally just a little loop. Yeah. Little, with a uh, filter, filter on it. I don't know where I got that. Oh, that's a vocoder. So this makes more yeah, sense now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this was... And that triggers the... Let's see where that was mapped to. Um, oh, no, external, input. no input, not used. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't even in there. Is this an idea? Yeah, it's, this is just an idea that never yeah. made it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, just an effects noise, bottom end rolled off it. Yeah. Bit of chorus. Um, like I said, there's not much in terms of synth work in this track. It's all focused on the bass line and the vocal. Yeah, yeah. Another effect. That was a vocal that never made the cut. Yeah. I like a, a G, just a little an effects sound. Could go in the drum group, possibly that synth with an auto filter just there's a lot of little subtle elements in this track that just kind of add to the groove nice little quirky stuff must yeah. be sort of like a tantra it is it's really is it's i suppose it's a bit darker than a lot of my stuff this track so it's, yeah yeah i can't wait to play that track from shell not fade have everybody ever has everybody ever listened that have you already 
it's not out, no? So the show. It's not out, no. Yeah. No one's heard it. So nice, you're no gonna do. It. It. So I've got a premiere here, nice, because I really yeah. like the track, man. All right, so um, let's see. Um, ben Lloyd asks, how many tracks do you finish a month, and how many of those will you select to send for demos? Um, most tracks that I finish will go for demos because I don't like them. I don't finish them. Yeah. So in terms of ideas, I could start with three, four ideas in a day sometimes. Yeah. Um, I do finish some tracks that I end up not liking. Um, so let's say in a month, that's a difficult one. Yeah. <laughs> it really it can change month by month. I think it's... this month I made, you could say maybe one a week. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually. You've been touring a lot, then. Eh? Happy with. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Summer months, gigs and stuff. Yeah, because. But that... then again, I, I quite yeah. like that because it forces me to make new music for the gigs. Yeah, yeah, so... exactly. It forces you as well to. But you know, I'm I'm a big fan of uh, of like throwing in ideas and then later on you're browsing your projects from what you did a month or two months ago you go like oh hey this one is nice and then you you immediately get into that loop and and just maybe in two hours you have a, a great track so leaving behind mm. all these little sketches i think it's a really smart way to work because you don't always have time to finish a whole track it is, yeah and it's like just, i think i'm yeah. pretty sure there's one in here that look at loads of the projects will be your may 21 beat just just drums like they're 25th of august that'll just be a sketch of yeah. something yeah. You know, 22nd February but I like what happens is they're all seems really disorganized but those will be old beats that I've made let's say in you know June yeah uh, if I'm stuck for an idea I can't come up with drums or whatever uh, or if I'm in a rush and I've got I come up with an idea like yeah. I'm like okay that's a cool sample yeah okay I, I thought of this bass line in my head I can jump back grab drums from an old project that's never been released yeah. And then use those drums to sketch the idea quickly. Yeah. If I need to come back and fix up the drums, I can do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's leaving behind all these little ideas. There's this guy, Mike Monday, who teaches uh, music as well. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. And he does also, um, like he says, make a sketch a day, basically, you know. And then once you have a bunch of sketches over a month, you can then decide what you want to finish, you know. So that's really cool. Um, let's see. Uh, lessons in life. Will you be at ADE next month? Yes, I'll be doing a masterclass for Armada, which is going to be interesting uh, for Ableton, which is going to be cool. Talking about a little bit of a workflow and whatnot. And uh, I'm playing the crane with uh, with Lucian Ford, which is really funny. And uh, I think two more little little gigs here and there. And I'm going to be hanging out and hope to see everybody. Are you going to ADE, uh, Robbie? Um, I, d I don't know yet, to be honest. Um, I haven't got any bookings yet for ADE. Um, we could do like a big meetup. I've been offered a gig that weekend, but the 21st is actually my birthday. Ah. So I'm deciding, do I want to spend my birthday in Amsterdam or I haven't actually been home for my birthday in, you know, a couple of years now. Yeah, yeah. So I do have this idea of maybe I want to be at home and spend it with some family and friends and stuff for once. Yeah. But yeah. It's a difficult one because I do love AD. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, it's it's fun. It's fun. And, you know, I know Andrew Azara will be there. Probably M. High yeah. will be there as well because Piff guys will probably do something. And uh, I'm going to be there. We could do like a big meetup. Yeah. <laughs> that dive I know, in live meetup. The, the <laughs> yeah. Madame Tower show. Is yeah, it? yeah. And the Amsterdam Tower is always like really, really nice. You got great, mm. great. And, and there's just great parties and inspiration out there. And every, everybody from mm. the music industry worldwide is going to be there. So it's, you know, I, uh, you know, you can celebrate your birthday a week later. Go like, hey, hey, friends, family. Well, it's, gonna be a week later. It, it's only a day. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. In the end, yes. Yeah. Somebody has also. I saw a message. Groovo. He said, "Like, what's the wildest thing you've seen at a gig?" <laughs> and also, what's it like to? I think find this one really interesting. What What's it like to find success at a young age? Because a bit like disclosure. How do you deal with it? Suddenly, you have to travel <laughs> to the other side of the world. Is that you know? Yeah, dude. First of all, I wouldn't compare me to disclosure. <laughs> Those guys are. I love them. Yeah. You know, one of my inspirations actually, because I remember listening to White Noise when you know I was first kind of making house music when they released White Noise the tune. Yeah, yeah. I just thought that melody is insane. It's so catchy. That synth noise, loved it. Yeah. Um, wildest thing I've seen at a gig. Um, there's a lot of stuff pops to mind. Yeah, I don't know. Probably stuff that shouldn't be said. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you. Well, seen... I did see. I did see a girl with three breasts one time at a gig. That was interesting, but it was one of the stage performers. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Everyone had the same question on their mind after the gig. Is that real? Is that real? And yeah. it turns out no, it was just prosthetic. They stuck it on for the show. At oh, this, yeah, it was yeah. in New Zealand. Crazy, crazy party, but they had a whole circus thing. Yeah, yeah. And it was um, the DJ after me was playing. Yeah. She was one of the stage dancers, uh, and she turned around and took off her top in front of him, and his face just his jaw dropped. Like, and he turned around, doesn't look at us like so confused. It's like uh, <laughs> as if we could give him an answer, but we all stood like, what the I'm "Sorry, man, we yeah. don't know." I think it's like from isn't it the, the movie Dusk Till Dawn from Dusk Till Dawn or something like this Quentin Tarantino old school oh, Quentin Tarantino. I, I don't know. Where, I, there is know, a movie, yeah, anyway, isn't there? Yeah, 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 yeah. I haven't seen it, but. Yeah, I think it was Dust Till Dawn. If everybody, anybody knows, let us know. Um, I think it's time for a little break. And I want to play the Dream of Me track, uh, which is going to be released on Shell Not Fade, which is nice. Is your first release on Shell Not Fade? It is, yeah. 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 Cool. It's cool that you went this this route because I, I really... Well, it's kind of because, um, well, I, I li- I've got the new flat in Bristol now. I went to university in Bristol. Yeah. And they're based in Bristol, yeah. the label. So. There you go. Very kind of logical. Just felt stuff. right, and yeah. I like the music they were releasing. Something different. Yeah, it's demoing. nice. Wow. Yeah, I'm excited to play this. This is this is definitely my favorite, actually, of all uh, all the all three. Here we go.
Okay, sorry guys, <laughs> I put on the wrong tune. I was a bit struggling today with like a full um, WhatsApp inbox next to preparing this show and I mixed two tracks. So the fa Shall Not Fade one will come. Uh, this was Funky Ride, which you made two weeks ago or so. Hey, we lost your voice. Maybe you can check your... Uh... Zoom sound. Yeah, uh, there you are, you're back, yeah. Can you hear me, yeah? Yeah, can you hear you. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. I don't know what happened there. I didn't even change any sounds. Oh, that's weird. It's um, gone for a little bit. That's all you're like. Yeah, let me just. <laughs> maybe because you stopped the screen Say share again? and it had just had to. Maybe because you stopped the screen share, it had to like recalibrate, you know? Yeah, yeah, probably. Um, I think it's the Ableton. I tried to load this project and crashed. And, oh, it crashed. Ah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. That happens. So I had yeah. to. Yeah. yeah, I hate it when it happens, you know. Also, like when I'm sometimes I'm making a new track and then I haven't I haven't saved it yet, and then it crashes and it opens up, and then you have to refine the presets that you are having because mm, then my like my yeah. my, my uh, VSTs don't have their presets anymore. It's terrible. I've lost so yeah. many projects. Yeah, yeah, so many. Yeah, it's an Here opportunity to make something better. You know? Brilliant. Cool. So we're going to have a look at the funky ride that we just listened to. Yeah, yeah I, I, I just, just, re <laughs> just wrongly named them apparently. It's funny. There we go. This is, yeah, this is funky ride. Oh, it's got a Joko kick. Y yeah. <laughs> did you steal a kick from Joko? Uh, I did, but I know he stole kicks from people, so yeah, I don't man. feel too bad about Maybe it. <laughs> you stole a kick from him that he stole from somebody else, you know, so I did never yeah, feel so bad it's about a, it. Yeah. Who knows who this kick belongs to? <laughs> Man, I think it was actually like um, Namaste. I was making this track yeah. and then I didn't like the kick I had and I wanted to finish the idea, nicked his kick, yeah. put it in <laughs> and now I can't get rid of it Yeah, because yeah. I actually like it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's good, man. Fuck um, it. You know, kicks are meant to be shared. I believe kick drums are... Uh, yeah, yeah, are, yeah. yeah. Somebody comes up to so, you and say, hey, you stole my kick. See. You know. It's all the parts here. So this is literally the same again. This this track is also um, vocoder for the vocal. <laughs> really embarrassing myself here with these vocals. These, uh, uh, Joko's online. He says, I want... Vocals. Joko said yeah. he wants 20% of the track because of the kick. <laughs> well, thank goodness it's unreleased. <laughs> I'll give it away for free. <laughs> Maybe you can do a project together, you know? Want it, want it, want it. He does a yeah, remix. That would be sick, that would be sick. With his own kick, he's, uh, or he does a remix with your kick. He, eh? he steals uh, yeah. a kick from you and makes a remix, <laughs> and you're even even Steven. Swap parts, yeah. He's allowed <laughs> to take any of my kicks. I mean, but I, I, know, I, I still probably the, come from someone else's. I stole the kick of DJ Wild once. If we're ever like, well, uh, do you know what? Hey, if people say music is art, you know what? You know, it's kind of like making a collage. Take parts of old newspaper clippings put them in there you go yeah. there's a new piece of art anyway. exactly you know there's also this this book called steal like an artist and also there's a, com a documentary on youtube called everything is a remix where you see that like quentin tarantino steals like scenes from old movies from the 20s and and, and for i don't know from the 40s whatever and so you know there's there's you know yeah. everything is a remix so yeah yeah so I mean, there's so much. Is, but, you know, a I good mean, kick and also for everybody still wondering, like, how do you process your kick? Just find some good kicks. Just go this, take an hour and listen to some tracks. And if you hear a really good kick and, and there's a, a, a nice spot to steal a kick, then take that kick and make some mm. tracks with it. And, you know, it's it's it doesn't have to be really difficult, you know. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to be honest, I could have spent hours processing the kick for this tune, but when I had the idea, <laughs> it was easier to just nick one. So basically this project was based around was scrolling through, find this sample here. Oh, no, not that one, this here. Nice. You know? So it actually sounds like, do you know what I'd be quicker doing? I will put this in audio effect rack and then I can turn it off. There we go. There we go. So a little process on it. Yeah. So roll off the lows. A little delay. 
the filter will be used somewhere else in the track. Yeah, I love that. Uh, the Here we go. So that's, that's all the filler does. Where, where did you get this uh, pass, this sample uh, then? Sorry, was high it, pass filter as well. Was this a sample? You Say got, again? Where did you get this sample? Did you or did you just took it from? Pretty sure it was on, on Splice or on something. Splice. What does it say here? Cool James. Cool James. Maybe it's James Brown kind of. Stones packs. The Golden Hip Hop Principles. That must be the pack on ah, Splice. Cool. The Golden Hip Hop Principles. So it's a hip hop pack. Yeah, cool. So obviously it's a lot, a lot slower than this. Very James Brown inspired. Yeah, yeah cool. Original yeah, it is, isn't it? So yeah, it's cool. pitched up actually as well. Yeah, yeah. Right. Wow! Well, oh, yeah. Diving like so that's the, that's the sample. <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, so it's all based around that. Yeah. Um. This is a little nice little RB. Just little stabs. Yeah, little RB thing. This here was. Oh. Didn't make the cut. Didn't or... make the cut. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then basically the whole idea was it, I thought it needed a vocal list track. And I'd literally just been listening, or someone had been listening to Groove Operator that was with me. Um, if you want to get high, <laughs> get on my <laughs> funky <laughs> ride. ride. Yeah. So that was the vocal. Yeah. Um, don't know how I came up with that vocal. I think it was like chatting with someone and like back and forth. We kind of come up with the vocal idea. Yeah, cool. Um, and then that's the saw wave. Yeah. Same yeah, again, yeah. vocoder. Yeah. And then this is the. So this might be more interesting. This is the actual the trigger for the vocoder yeah. essentially. Yeah, yeah, something with good just, good amount of harmonics. I bet everybody watching is gonna make like a vocoder track now. We're yeah. gonna have shitloads of vocoder tracks. Yeah, <laughs> literally, it just happens to be two of the tracks that we've yeah. done our vocoder. I've not done any more with. Vocoders. I've never actually never done one. I should do one. Actually, I'll I'll do one. I'll go I'll go come up with some it's, crazy. It's loop. actually it's, it's quite fun. Yeah. Cause I was sat here in my house, mate. He was sat in the corner when I started making this. Me singing the vocals into my laptop, and he looks at me and looks at me. He looks at me and goes, "Just you're not you." <laughs> <laughs> it's just like <laughs> honestly listen hear me out this will be cool yeah yeah um cool. but yeah so i literally played around with the vocoder settings on this one oh you used a little Changed bit of the, the eq on it as well yeah 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 level it honestly it depends on the vocal you have to tweak it a lot yourself find yeah. what sounds good for you yeah but that's with everything you know, you know? like i said in a little like, bit yeah i like to with a little less attack you know yeah you have um, to tweak things till you like it. That's don't that's know what why I, I done this. If you want it, want it, oh, so if you want it, want it, so I did here was the vocal. Obviously, EQ'd it, but I didn't want a lot of um, with stereo it, frequencies yeah. in it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, a lot of width. Uh, yeah, because sometimes with a vocoder, it, it's a bit too. When I played yeah. it with the track, yeah. yeah. I thought it was a bit too jarring. So if you listen to it here with the track, without that on, whereas on, yeah, it's a bit more in the back. Yeah, yeah. I think it just it feels. Yeah, and that's uh, the thing, sits, you know. If, if you you you, 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 you seem to be somebody like you really know how you want it to sound and how you want to have it, and I think that's you know I teach music and people usually want to know how you set your settings and is this the best thing to do or that the best thing to do. The best thing is to try it out and then determine yourself. What do you like? What are your values? How do you how do you like it to sound? You know, and then try yeah. a bunch of things out and then you know how to get there. So it's not about the settings; it's just trying stuff out. So like, you could copy the settings of my vocoder. You could copy them if you want it, you know, but the thing is, if you record your own voice in, they're not going to sound the same with no. your voices to do yeah, exactly. with yeah. mine, you know. Just have to figure that stuff out, you know. A lot of stuff is just figuring it know, out. And, and this, it, this like, fun. this setting on this vocoder maybe would sound rubbish if it was a girl singing, you know, or it might sound brilliant, you know, but yeah, it just, you got to tweak it in the vocoder yeah. when you do the vocals through it, I think anyway. Yeah. 
it's nice. It takes me. That's honestly what took me the longest time in this track, just constantly changing it and being like, oh, do I like it? Do I not? Um, yeah, same as um, this one's same as Groove Operator, a little different baseline. Mm. So I've actually, it's, you know, times went on, started to get a little bit more organized. I've actually saved this preset now. <laughs> um, so it's Rob Lowe. Oh, this is a nice sub. Might be a version so of the. Basically, it's, yeah, operator. Yeah. So you've got. And then. Nice sometimes I'll turn this on and then. See that. Get a little bit more, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just a little bit of top. But this actually came from the guitar bass and then I tweaked a lot of the parameters. Yep. I believe, what did I change in it? Oh, that tag I think was like that anyway. Probably made the, shortened the, the attack, yeah. shortened the decay. I know I probably brought the level up of this oscillator here. Um, sometimes that's what I'll use for my bass lines, just that on its own. Yeah, it's this track, like with, with operator, yeah. you can create basically all bass lines you want. You know, I, I'm really a big fan of yeah. subboom bass. I think if subboom bass is my favorite, like bass synth at the yeah. moment, you know, and also it's just nice to have a different interface and some some other mm -hmm. other presets. But actually, if you I, just need to build something yourself, I used to use analog a lot. Analog, used to use also, analog a lot. Yeah. But yeah sort of i really like it that you're so that. into like all the stock all the stock plugins i think you're the the one that you yeah. even your whole able to nine vibe it's so funny it's like yeah. you know yeah. this this really shows <laughs> people like it doesn't really matter how many plugins you buy and, and how much money you invest it's just how much time you invest and how much you like the process you know uh, that's i think mm. it shows it mm. really well and also all this yeah, this exactly. uh this uh amp is also really nice from ableton right hardly use it so this was um, actually on top of this bass line, and it just had this little one shot. Ah, it's your layer again. So layered that with that. Yeah, nice. Um, it's rock know. all ten. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I don't cool. know why I added, added that yeah. actually. It's here. Actually, does bring out the high frequency. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, actually, nice with the arm. To be fair, I like that. Yeah, it's a pretty cool. Luna Ludmilla also yeah. uses this a lot. She uh, she's a Dutch producer. I don't know if you know her, and um, yeah. she also used uh, this. I've never used this. Made together with Softube. Why am I not using that shit? You know. Mm. Nice. I should write it down. Where's my book? So flanger on, but no. So leave the LFO off in the front flanger. Yeah. And just find a sweet spot. Play around with it. Yeah. Essentially, that's what it is. A little erosion again. And then just warm up the high end with a little bit of drive on it. It's actually got a little bit of reverb on here. Groovall says, Robbie, I'll send the coin for you to upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like change, man. I'll stick with my nine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> nah, I do need to. It's not... um. I need to actually get a new laptop. Yeah, get, get the full Monday. It's it. your birthday, guys. It's yeah, Robbie's birthday some, soon. I have some more memory on my laptop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's Robbie's birthday soon. Get him a new laptop. Off, to be honest. Yeah, it off. you know, yeah. and also like you'll find some new. They, and you know, they've put the audio effects in groups, but you can ungroup that so it still looks the same, and you get like lots of new, it's, new exciting stuff. Do you know, I I do like the idea of groups within groups. Yeah, that's the only thing I'm actually missing. Yeah, you know, I I do miss that. <laughs> that's the um, only thing it's so cool you're such a modest I love, person I love it, it I love it yeah. <laughs> being, being able to make a group within a group yeah yeah I remember when, my life I remember when that came that was really nice and there are some other handy features man you'll, you'll definitely like it and also like the whole interface will look a bit more 
clean you know just all the the whole yeah, like uh yeah. gra graphics is it's nicer and there's a lot of packs that come with the new one that you get like nice sequencers and you get all kinds mm -hmm. of new compressors via, through max for life which is nice the color limiter is really nice so I, I bet you will love to have more in stock stuff and that's more quality wise you know and mm -hmm. I, I believe they also mm -hmm. upgrade like the eq so you probably your sound is going to be a little bit better as well i think you know mm -hmm. yeah well there we go Ableton Seals 11 might not successful. have the vintage digital warmed. <laughs> well done. Eh? Diet crisps. Ableton yeah, 11, 11 might not have the vintage digital warmed. Digital warmed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. So does, we... this, does this make me a purist? Well, I only use old software. <laughs> no, it just makes you like a very practical person, you know, and you focus on the music and not so much in all the, all the technical blah, blah around uh, it, you know? So and I think yeah. that's, you know, that's really <laughs> inspiring to see actually. Ah, oh, these these progressions are also nice, you know. So yeah, this is the drum grip. Um, what's going on here? So just a little chop from a loop again. Yeah. I had no process, and other than oh, elevo tool for for Didn't, for making yeah, it. So yeah, it's just yeah. A, so and you I get the only take out the beginning of that. Yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. It was just too much. That's just a straight open hat loop. Yeah. Nothing exciting, really. Another. Oh, actually, maybe that one wasn't playing. Yeah, it was. Both of them. It's also yeah. nice how you explore your own track. You're like, oh, yeah. Really are. I know. Yeah. Why <laughs> did I do <laughs> this? Um, <laughs> this was just a loop. Pitch down. Mm. Yeah, Show with the, the transient, transient trick. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, um, Ben um, is asking how much do you tend to mix as you're laying down ideas, or do you mostly mix once the track's arranged? Uh, never when it's arranged. Uh, as I go along, yeah. so if I'll bring in an element, I'll if something stands out to me in a hi hat, I'll go sort that then and there. Yeah, you know, rather than spend it all. As you can see, I'm not very organized. Then spending the whole time looking through, being like, what is that that's annoying me? What's too loud? You know, yeah, I like yeah. to just do it as I go along. Yeah. So we'll be making a track and then constantly be listening and going, does this sound right? Yeah. You know, oh, I'll reduce that a little. Yeah. And also, um, also, you don't seem to do a lot of EQing and a lot of compression or stuff. It's just like very, no, it's very, just, you know. For me, it's more choosing sounds that I think work nice together. Yeah. That's the same again. Oh, I love this loop. A loop, but then one eighth on the the transient thing or whatever you call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do I actually know the name? Pitch the down. Nice. I like these kind of loops. Um, nice. Oh yeah, well, it's a nice loop. Just some nice transients for yeah. drums. Yeah. Right now, a bit. That's a chopped up loop again. This, I haven't used this in two years, this loop, and actually went back through an old project, the Mood and Rhythms project, and realized that I literally just stuck in this loop for the drums in it. Yeah. But then took it and really liked it, used it in low volume, just kind of to fill out the background. Yeah, it's good to get some of this these highs, uh, highs yeah. flowing there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, so this is, like we talked about earlier, this is the same thing again with the... Right. So that's the that's the loop itself. What I've done, EQ it on it, take out all the mono frequency, um, all the mono, out and yeah, you just get this real nice stereo. That's, that was a really nice trick. I think that goes down as trip tri trick of the day. Yeah, this is just an Ableton 909 clap. Yeah, shortened loads and. That's that's the drums really. They're nothing crazy. This yeah. was off. This was just a, a tom loop that I had in. Yeah. A bongo loop even. So yeah, that's that's the whole drums. Apart from that, this track is really simple actually. It's really <laughs> nice. Like like can you show your plugins for a little bit? Your plugin list on the left uh, in the browser. I I really like plugins. it. Yeah, yeah. All right, here we go. It's so cool. Okay, guys. This is the tools you need. That's like that's it. Barely that's it. anything and Ableton. 
and you can you can yeah. release stuff or on, get one, on, sorry. on Piv yeah. and, and Shall Not Fade and whatnot. It doesn't Tantra yeah. Serum I haven't used in a year. God knows how long. I used to use it in some yeah. of my old tracks. It was the baseline serum. Yeah. Um I had it on the rent to buy thing on Splice. Then yeah. decided what was the point. I wasn't really using it and I can do most of the stuff in serum on analog anyway for my baseline. Yeah. Yeah, Changed funny. away from that sound anyway, went more underground and <coughs> don't really use as many of the sawtooth synthy bass lines anymore now. Yeah. So Yeah, it's funny because this is I can actually recommend you this plugin. This is brilliant. This this plugin here. I can show you I used it in the the cruise control track. I yeah. have it in the project. I have yeah. the strings in this track, in that track were made with um where is it? This labs plugin. Oh, it's a free one, right? It is, the labs uh, yeah, thing, yeah, is, Spitfire, yeah, that is nuts. Yeah, lots of nuts. people that make so, like more organic stuff. They have all these bands, yeah, man. They have amazing yeah, so, pianos, and yeah, it's so good. Let me see. So, yeah, it's a good so, piano, man. Nice. nice soft piano. So essentially, you go on to their website, you can download different patches and put them in. It's a nice, nice. Uh, it's, the piano is lovely and soft. I don't know when I've ever used that in the track. Yeah, and they use. What I, I mostly use this for is the, the strings. Yeah. So strings are unbelievable. Yeah, nice. That's a great tip right there as well, guys. Get Spitfire. It's I love their uh, their banks. I I haven't used it a lot. I just downloaded it once and uh, played around with it. But uh, I remember the mm. sounds are really great. And some of my students really use it. They make more like a melodic or, or organic house. And it's, yeah, they have, yeah. there are so many bands. I, I believe they record all this from live pianos. And it's, they really have really good bands. It's, well. it's amazing. I, yeah, I think that's how they do it. They actually record yeah. each individual. Mm -hmm. album. Yeah, it's but it's, it's amazing because if you listen to the strings, I don't know if anyone's wearing earphones, you'll be able to hear, you know, they set up the strings like an orchestra. So yeah. if you listen... The violins will be panned to a certain side, you know, the viols, the cellos, whatever be on one side, yeah. you know. Yeah. And then if you go, it is, it's stereo, so it is, you know, but it's, the instruments are panned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They make it super sound, super wide. Yeah. So the lows almost play on yeah. the right side. You can take that off, obviously, but, but when you, you know, play some chords with it. It just sounds. That's a cool tip. And I nice, think this nice. is like a reverb yeah. almost. Yeah, it sounds so so uh, natural no, as it's, well. It's actually, yeah, it might be right there. I'm bringing up reminders here on my laptop. Oh, Andrew is asking, <laughs> can you play Fisher losing it? Well, we don't have that. We don't have that. So. <laughs> we can we can play is. World Hold On. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> I, and Music Live asks, how how do you how is the drum pro, drum bus processing on this one? You always use the mix gel, you told me, right? And, uh, um, in this case, well, not. my partner, I did, but I haven't on this. Um, Just a little bit so of glue. Here we are. A little bit of compression. I turned the dry wet half. That's not really doing anything, to be honest. No, drive drive is <laughs> not up. Yeah. Um, Auto filter, just yeah. in case I want to roll off the highs at a certain point yeah, in the track. Yeah. This is yeah. interesting, actually. I don't know why. I'm also not doing doing stuff. No. Yeah, compressor. Yeah. It's, that seems to soften it a little. Um, then once again, I've rolled off the highs, rolled off the lows. But to be honest, most of the processing happens if I hear something that sounds bad. Yeah, and you know if the volume is right, you're you're there, or else it. just yeah. get rid of it. Yeah, know? yeah. Cool, man. It's really nice to have seen. Not, it's just there's nothing crazy happening. But cool. I think it's nothing nice. We were like uh, one and a half hour in. Um, maybe if there's some more questions, put them in. We can uh, do like another fifteen minutes, maybe. And now I'll play, I'll play the shell not fade track, and um, let's go.
Oh, sorry, guys. I just. Oh wait, no. Yeah, no. You I, don't have it. I don't have it. I think I've it? I've rendered out. I've rendered out the same. Sorry, people. We don't have it. Well, I can. Um, what I can do is just play it. Play if you it. Want. Yeah, play it because I really want to play that that song because it's such a good song and it, right. and I think I've just rendered. I was. Can you? My WhatsApp was like next to me is like fucking overloaded. I was trying to answer messages and prepare yeah. the show, and uh, I rendered the same track twice apparently. Yeah, let's see. Um... Andrew's going to try the vocoder tricks. Is. Yeah, man. I'm also going to make a vocoder uh, track. That's our next thing. We're all going to make a vocoder track. Oh, dear. It's going to be... <laughs> I'm going to keep this in here. 28, yeah. 28 vocoder tracks. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be interesting uh, ADE. <laughs> all the, all yeah. <laughs> if you find the, the, the Shell Not Fade one, and uh, I Love Fun, could you please explain in detail that mono stereo processing on the top loops? Yeah, you just put like an EQ... And you so, put the EQ, yeah, maybe you can show yeah. the EQ setting. It's you put it on mid side and then put it on the uh, on mono and then take all the mono out. So you only have the sides. There's multiple ways to do it actually. So I can I don't know, can you see my screen or uh I can only see uh yeah, we can see Ableton. Oh, so we Ableton. Oh, so you can't yeah. see um it just went online and searched on my side right. like um, what I can do is I can resend you the link if you like, or just uh, or share if you screen if you or whatever. if you play it, then it's, we should hear it actually. If you play the song, yeah, let's see. Such a cool song. Yeah, it? yeah. Let's listen to this for a while. It's nice. Awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah, I had the extended I'm mix. So, yeah. I'm so used to hearing the, the shortened radio edit because I actually made it first and then made this one after. Uh, yeah, I also wanted uh, to play so the extended like, This was like, yeah, <laughs> That's yeah this track was made a long time ago, so yeah. it's different. It's, Fixed it up, made this extended version recently. But yeah. I'll mute myself anyway here. I'm just going to go to the bathroom yeah. and let it play out for you. Yeah, I'm, al I'm also going to mute. I'm also going to go get some more get some more water.
love this drop, man. It's insane. All right, maybe stop it before uh, Shell and Faith get angry. Maybe, uh, maybe we can stop it now. Or uh, everybody should make sure. Everybody should make a breakbeat track and a vocoder track. It's amazing tune, man. I think this is my favorite <laughs> track. Like, I really, really like it. It's just a breakbeat. The drop is insane. It's really good. Um, yeah, it's yeah. Thanks. Just the euphoric kind of something different. Yeah. I've only ever played it out once. I can't remember where it was. It's I think when I done the the Australia tour. I think it's, I played it somewhere. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's a great closer, man. You can use it if you do a closing yeah, set. Yeah. Play this as uh, the last one. You know. Uh, I think it's it's a really epic tune. Uh, I really like it. So, um, yeah, Robbie, thanks for uh, for doing this. Um, I'm really happy you you showed your your fucking practical way of working, which is really inspiring. Um, you know, check out the upgrade to Ableton 11 and uh, and get that yeah, organ bass going as well. Needs to be done. <laughs> yeah. And uh, is there anything you'd like? Feels to... in life. Sorry. I said seals in life. <laughs> seals in life. What does that mean? I don't know. Sail, it like seals is in. It's my accent, man. Sales would be high in English. Oh, person. seals in life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah seals in life. I was yeah. like, seals. What's it? Like, what seals in life? Yeah. Oh. Well, that's, that's the accent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was, it's been such a pleasure, man. You're an easygoing dude. And, uh, and I, I, I thank you for sharing. Is there anything you'd like to plug uh, that's coming up? Uh, what are you going to do? Uh, is there anything that people need to uh, follow? Uh, maybe your own label or whatnot? Yeah. Um, I suppose the only one is I have started my own label. Uh, at the minute, I'm just going to use it to sort of fill in the gaps in the calendar, do a couple of like self releases so I can put them on Spotify and stuff because I know people, you know, the band camp's great. I love band camp. Yeah. But, um, People are always pestering me saying, why is this not on Spotify? So I thought, well, I'll start my own label, put some music out on there. Yeah. And um, we've actually managed to clear uh, a really old, um, well, I say really old, I suppose it's not that old, an old uh, vocal from a trans tune cool. made it into house version. I'm sure some, some people might know what it is, but we're actually going to release that on my own label. Cool. Hopefully time frame within the next month i would say yeah so keep an eye for that the label's called avenue um nice i'm gonna be doing it at the start you know obviously like i'm not a not a huge name or anything so it's probably not the right time in my career to start a you know a label and get other people on but um in the future possibly i will be accepting demos for it getting other people involved yeah yeah um but we'll see how that release goes first yeah well, it's, because you never know, know so it might blow up you know you you suddenly you you uh you have like uh lots of you have a uh, lots of people sending you tracks i want to be on that label you will have anyway yeah but uh yeah cool <laughs> i'm looking know. forward to hear it man uh I think it's a uh, it's a yeah. good step, man. I, I also I'm starting out a label as well. I want to, you know, I've been really I've been traveling for the last four weeks. Got ADE coming up, so I'm um, I'm just like gathering tracks. So if people have tracks, you can also send stuff to me. So it's gonna be housey, breakbeat, you know, just good good music, good house music. Could be a bit dub housey as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm also planning to start that next year, just to start fresh have some stuff out, you know, and it's, I think it's nice to build like a platform, you know, also like, um, like James Dexter also has his, you know, his own label, which is nice that he has it for many years. And it's, it's just nice to curate something and to build like a sort of a like nice catalog. Yeah, it's, cool it's a well. nice, it's a nice, oh yeah, exactly. So it's a nice hobby as well on the side, you know, to do, to do some other stuff than making music, you know, it's a, it's great. So yeah, mm. Music Life says, shall we look at the track? Now I have a dinner to attend to, so unfortunately we have to stop it and um, uh, we'll have to ask him next time. So maybe if you want to come back uh, another time, Robbie, then uh, then we can have a look at the Shell Not Fade track. So maybe somewhere next maybe year. Maybe with a, a nice fresh Ableton Life. Fresh Ableton <laughs> 11, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, nice. Yeah. yeah, thanks for joining, man. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. I'm going to stop the stream. Hey. We're, Thanks for having me. We're back next week. I think it's Timmy P. And um, I'm not sure if it's next week's Timmy P. Anyway, we got Timmy P coming soon. And uh, I got more coming for you. But 
uh, you'll see that appear on the Instagram. Follow Lessons in Life on Instagram, YouTube, or whatnot. And if you want to support the cause, uh, I've released a new Top Loop um, pack yesterday. Uh, that's on the lessonsinlife.com. Uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I saw a lot of familiar faces, which is nice. So um, see you next time, and uh, keep making music.